When I first became a data analyst, I was really convinced that the only tool set to use were Excel, SQL, and Tableau. But I soon realized that that was not really the case. In this video, I will show you the exact tools that I use every single day. Whether you're just starting out or trying to get better, this video will show you the tech stack that actually matters today in the workplace. And by the end, you will know which tools to try first to give you an advantage in the market, which ones are free, and what you can do with all of them. And this is really valuable because these are tools that are present in a lot of job descriptions and most people don't even know about it. And that is precisely why they can give you an edge in the market. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Laura, I'm a data analytics lead with over six years of experience working in the data and AI space. And if you like these topics, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss future videos. So the first tool that you absolutely need to know about is called Google BigQuery. And Google BigQuery is a cloud-based data warehouse that provides fast SQL-like querying for massive data sets. All the data my company stored in BigQuery, so this is the tool for me to access and find the data using my job. One of the amazing things about BigQuery is that it can handle billions of rows of data and return results in just seconds. And this is thanks to the distributed architecture, which uses Google infrastructure to break the work into smaller tasks and process them in parallel. Also, not many people know about that BigQuery also supports machine learning directly within its environment through something that is called BigQuery ML, which allows to create and train models on large datasets without having to move data anywhere else. And obviously, because it's a Google product, it integrates seamlessly with uh, things like Google Sheets, which makes it easy to share the results with others who may not be familiar with SQL. BigQuery uses a pay-as-you-go model, which means that you only pay for the data you process, which can be cost-effective for smaller products. Also, the beauty of BigQuery is that it's super easy to get started. So I just search on Google uh, BigQuery. I'm going to click this link here. And here, then, I will click on Try it in Console. And we are already inside BigQuery. And uh, again, the other cool thing that I have is that if you click on here, open this query, then automatically on the left hand side, you will see this BigQuery public data, which is basically a collection of data sets that you can start uh, working with. This can be used for projects on your own or just to practice your SQL skills. And it also gave me this kind of a, a draft query that I can test by just clicking run. And this is it. In just a few seconds, I'm using Google BigQuery, which is a tool super popular in uh, uh, all different companies. I'm using a query that was already built for me, and I can already see the result of the query. And then now I can go ahead and uh, proceed with my work. Now, the other super important tool that you must know about is GitHub. And again, I use it pretty much on a daily basis. And GitHub is a platform for collaboration, version control, and uh, also showcasing projects to the world, because a lot of people use it to store their work there to then share it with others. And every time I make a change on a project, GitHub saves it as a new version, which is called a commit. This means I have a complete history of everything I've done, and I can always go back to a previous version if something goes wrong. GitHub also allows me to create branches, which are like different versions of my project that I can work on without affecting the main code. And this is really useful when I'm experimenting or adding new features. And another cool feature of uh, GitHub is uh, GitHub Actions, which automate uh, tasks like running tests or deploying projects whenever I update my code. And so in data analytics, GitHub is super valuable because it ensures data projects are properly versioned and easy to share with others. Plus, it helps build a portfolio that showcases coding skills and real projects to potential employers or clients. Now that we cover GitHub, there is another tool that is becoming super, super popular in the market, and that is called DBT, which stands for Data Build Tool. This is an essential tool for transforming raw data into something usable and insightful. It allows me to create reusable SQL scripts called models that transform data consistently across different datasets. And one interesting thing about DBT is that it treats your SQL transformations like software development, allowing you to test, document, and version control your transformations just like code. And this also means that the data is actually reliable and can be used by other team members without issues. Not many people know that DBT also supports Jinja, which is a templating language that is like a mix of SQL and Python. With Jinja, you can add dynamic features to your model, such as loops and conditions, making it powerful for writing flexible and efficient transformations. And also, DBT provides the ability to run tests on your models, helping you to perform different checks on your data to ensure quality and consistency. And I will show that in just a second. 
And so just because I want to give you a very practical idea of what I do with dbt, this is a test uh, model.sql file. And in this file, I simply create a new table and I use SQL to define what is gonna um, be included in my table. And so I build a, a city that is a sales data. I take data from a table that is called row sales. And then I do a simple transformation. So in this case, I select the customer ID, the count of the orders and the sum of the amount and also the first order date and also the last order date. And at the end, I have a select star from the sales summary, which will create my final table. So this is a SQL model that will create a table in my data warehouse, but also I have a test model.yaml file. And this is again a very powerful feature of dbt because I can define a different test that dbt should check on my SQL models. And so in this case, I'm listing all the columns that we have in the SQL file that I showed before. And so for example, for the customer ID column, I want to check that all the values that we have are not null and also they are all unique. And this is the power of dbt. I can create my models and uh, test all in the same environment so that also the rest of my team can work with my projects. Also, dbt helps with the dependency management by clearly showing how different data models relate to each other, which makes troubleshooting way, way easier when something goes wrong. And obviously integrates very well with all the main data warehouse like Snowflake, BigQuery that we mentioned before, and Amazon Redshift. And so dbt for data analytics is a game changer because it ensures the data pipeline is scalable, well-documented and free from manual errors. Now that we cover dbt, another tool that I see more and more often in job descriptions is called Fivetran. So Fivetran essentially is an uh, automated data integration tool that helps uh, bring in data from various different sources into one centralized location, which is often the data warehouse like Google BigQuery that we covered before. And one of the best thing about Fivetran is the ability to create connectors to almost any data source you can think of, including databases, marketing platforms, and also business apps like uh, Salesforce and Shopify. And Fivetran not only pulls the data, but also keeps it updated automatically, meaning that I always have the latest data available without doing anything manually. And so with Fivetron, data analysts can focus more on analyzing data and less on the time-consuming task of manually managing data pipelines and data collection. And again, because I want to give you a very practical idea of what we are talking about here, I'm within the Fivetron website. And if I go to connectors, and I scroll down, you can see all the different apps that uh, Fivetron can connect to. And if I click on show more, the list goes on and on and on. In my case, I use a lot of the connectors to Salesforce and uh, also the documentation is very uh, useful in Fivetron because if I open basically the data model that I can connect to uh, through Salesforce using Fivetron, this is the list of items that I can uh, retrieve from Salesforce. And so again, this is super useful because for example, if I want all the data about our accounts from Salesforce, I don't have to create a ad hoc code or API calls to get this data from Salesforce. I can just use Fivetran to connect directly to Salesforce and migrate all of the data from Salesforce to our data warehouse, in our case, Google BigQuery. And well, the other super important tool that I just mentioned and that I also use pretty much on a daily basis is Salesforce, which is a comprehensive CRM, which stands for Customer Relationship Management. And it's basically the place where businesses store all their customer information, interactions, and sales analytics. And so as a data analyst, Salesforce gives me access to a gold mine of customer data, which can be analyzed to improve customer satisfaction and sales strategy. Not many people know that Salesforce not only collects data, but also allows customization through dashboards and reports, which can be tailored to track key metrics. And one interesting fact is that Salesforce has its own programming language called Apex and also its own query language, which is SOQL, which stands for Salesforce Object Query Language, which I sometimes use to pull specific data sets directly from the platform. And Salesforce also integrates very well with other uh, tools like data visualization tools, for example, Tableau and Power BI. So this is definitely a tool for people that are specifically analyzing and working with sales data, but definitely something that you should add to your resume in case you're interested in working these kind of areas. And Salesforce is definitely not rocket science. It's just a place to store all of your customer information. And pretty much in a couple of days, you will get familiar with the user interface. Now, another tool that I use again on a daily basis is Tableau, which is my go-to uh, data visualization tool. 
Tableau makes it super easy to connect to any uh, data source, including Salesforce that we just covered. And I just love the platform because it allows you to create uh, amazing visualization in seconds with uh, the drag and drop functionality. One thing that, again, not many people know about is that uh, Tableau has a couple of different versions that you can use. And so in my case, I use Tableau Desktop, which is my app that I use in my local machine to create and test new dashboards. And then we also have Tableau Server, which is basically the cloud version of Tableau, where I share all of the visualization and reports that I create so that the rest of the organization can uh, utilize my analytics. And so maybe a little hack here is instead of just adding Tableau to your resume, you can specify that you are confident and familiar with Tableau Desktop, but also proficient with the Tableau Server. And that will give you an edge in the market because obviously you show that you are very familiar with the different Tableau nuances and also know the distinction between Tableau cloud environment and Tableau local environment. Now, the tool that I left at the end, which is now my absolute favorite, is Visual Studio Code or VS Code which is a powerful program for writing and managing code. One of the best features of VS Code is it's a very long collection of extensions that allow you to customize your coding environment to your needs. So this effectively means that I can bring all of my different tools in one place because of these extensions. And again, here I want to give you a very practical idea of uh, exactly which extensions I use. So I'm inside VS Code here. If I go on extensions on the left hand side, these are pretty much all the extensions that I downloaded and then I use pretty much on a daily basis. So I have Better Jinja that uh, helps me with the coding when I use dbt. I have BigQuery Runner, which means that I can connect to my BigQuery warehouse and run queries uh, right in uh, VS Code. I have obviously my GitHub Copilot, which is just a, a chat that again can help me to write code faster. I have my GitHub pull request, which is my uh, extension to work with uh, GitHub and make changes to our repository. I have the power user for dbt. So again, you see here that uh, in order for me to use dbt, I use this ex extension in VS Code. And also I have Python debugger that uh, again helps me for uh, working with uh, Python and debugging my code. And again, this is just an example of the extensions that I personally use, but the list is super long and it really makes your coding environment perfect for your needs. And well, there you have it. This is a simple explanation about all the data tools that I use in my day to day as a data analytics lead. And in case you got at least one useful information in this video, make sure to subscribe so that I can help you even further in the next ones. Also, in case you want to understand what data roles might be best for you, I made a whole video where we explore all the most in-demand data careers. There is a huge amount of value compressed in one video only, so make sure to check it out here at the link that you see in the screen. And well, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.